Hamas says it has accepted a ceasefire proposal to halt the war in Gaza. The militant group made the announcement after a phone call with the Prime Minister of Qatar and Egypt's intelligence minister. Both countries have been mediating negotiations between Hamas and Israel for months, but a deal is not set in stone yet. Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu's office says the plan Hamas approved does not address Israel's essential demands. The Biden administration says it's on the ground trying to help reach an agreement. We continue to believe that a hostage deal is in the best interests of the Israeli people. It's in the best interests of the Palestinian people. It would bring an immediate ceasefire. It would allow uh, increased movement of humanitarian assistance. And so we're going to continue to work to try to reach one. Israel says it is sending negotiators to continue the talks to reach an agreement. Illinois Senator Dick Durbin reacting to the ceasefire developments. Well, I think there's a possibility that this ceasefire could lead to some political solution and the end of violence. What has happened with the deaths of innocent civilians uh, in Gaza is just absolutely un unacceptable. Unacceptable to think that children are literally dying of starvation in Gaza is a situation which we cannot rationalize under any circumstances. Durbin condemned Hamas's deadly attack on Israel October 7th. He says Israel had no choice but to defend itself, but he believes the solution must be political, not military. Israeli forces are now striking targets in the city of Rafah. The military dropped leaflets just this morning, ordering Gazans in one part of the city to evacuate. The message warns of extreme force and says anyone nearby will put their own lives at risk. Israeli leaders approved a military operation there just hours after Hamas accepted that ceasefire. The president doesn't want to see operations in Rafah that put at greater risk the more than a million people that are seeking ref refuge there. So you would support a limited operation in Toronto? I think I've answered the question. U.S. officials are worried that those who are evacuating will have nowhere to go. More than a million people are believed to be in Rafah.